Hello, my name is Justin, aka Justin Lambchuk on Twitter, as most of you probably already know. And today I am making a preview video for the 2017 Grand Prix Final competition. It's a very exciting and stressful time for us skating fans because it's getting closer to the time where the athletes will be named to the Olympic teams for their respective countries. Woo! Wow, hold your breath and pray for your favorite skaters. I'm going to be honest, today's video is most likely going to just benefit me because I want to familiarize myself with the exact details of which athletes qualified for the final because I can't believe it's December 1st already. I have such a busy month coming up and beginning in January, I will be relocating from Seattle to Boston for work for about six weeks and so much has to get done. And then we have the holidays, so really... This video is for myself, so if you are an avid skating fan and you follow all of the daily news that's released, then you're really going to learn nothing new from this video. If you're more of a casual skating fan, or if you did not follow the season up to this point, or not familiar with who qualified for the final and you don't mind the sound of my voice, then go ahead and keep on watching. The format of this video will be me talking a little bit and then showcasing the spreadsheet I made based off of the athlete scores from their two Grand Prix events because that's going to help me make some of my predictions. So let's go ahead and begin with the men's discipline. We have Nathan Chen whoop, whoop, of the United States qualifying first with two gold medals and then Shoma Uno of Japan qualifying with a gold and silver. Then from Russia we have Mikhail Kolyada and Sergei Voronov and then Adam Rippon from the United States and then joining him will be Jason Brown, who is a replacement for Boyang Jin from China, who unfortunately had to withdraw due to an ankle injury. That's actually pretty unfortunate. I was looking forward to see to seeing a battle of the quad lutzes, but maybe that will happen at the Olympic Games. I wish Boyang Jin the best. Now, some names that are missing from the Grand Prix Final this year, which is surprising because it's an Olympic year, are Patrick Chan from Canada, um, Javier Fernandez from Spain, and Yuzuru Hanyu, reigning Olympic champion from Japan. So things are going to get interesting. Now, just because they're not here at the final doesn't mean they're not in the mix to win a medal at the Olympic Games. In fact, I think that's the opposite. I think those three who are missing are definitely still in the mix, but they just have a lot of more work to do than maybe they did four years ago because they have to deal with Nathan Chen, Shoma Uno, and Mikhail Kolyada pushing the technical envelope. So yeah, we'll have to see how things go. Okay, with the ladies, unfortunately Russian skater Evgenia Medvedeva had to withdraw due to a leg injury as well. I wish her a speedy recovery. This is such shocking news to hear because she is such a great technician landing all of these like difficult jumps, winning all of her competitions. So I hope she uh, heals um, fast enough so she can compete at the Olympic Games and make things interesting. So that makes the top qualifier who will be there, Alina Zikideva from Russia, then Caitlin Osman from Japan, Carolina Kostner of Italy, Maria Sotskova, and then the next two Japanese women I'm excited about making the final, Wakaba Higuchi and Satoko Miyahara are going to be at the final. That's so exciting for Japan. Now, with the Japanese ladies only having two spots for the Olympic Games, I just wonder if those two are a lock for the team, Wakaba Higuchi and Satoko Miyahara. We'll have to see how they perform. Maybe I'd have to bet that the top finisher of those two Japanese ladies would be a guarantee for the Olympic team, especially if they want a medal. So very interesting things to think about. Now for the pairs, we have Wen Jing Sui and Kong Han of China qualifying first, then Tarasova of Kenya and Vladimir Morozov of Russia. Aliona Savchenko and Bruno Maso of Germany, Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford of Canada, mm -hmm. then Ksenia Stolbova and Fedor Klimov of Russia, and then last we have Yu Xiaoyu and Hao Zhang from China qualifying for the final. And I don't know about you all, but I'm also really sad about Vanessa James and Morgan Cipres of France not qualifying for the final. I love their Say Something 
free dance. I love both of their programs, actually. Did I say free dance? I mean free program. Love both of their programs. I love how they skate. I think they bring something very exciting to a figure skating competition. So hopefully they could stay home and train really hard for the Olympic Games. I would love to see them have a moment with that free program. Oof, it would be my everything. Okay, then let's move on with ice dance. We have the French team, Gabriella Papadakis and Guillaume Cizeron qualifying first, followed by Tessa Virtue and Scott Moore of Canada. Then we have Maya and Alex Shibutani from the United States, as well as their uh, teammates, Madison Chalk and then Bates, and then Madison Hubble and Zach Donahue. Rounding out the qualifiers would be the Italians, Anna Capellini and Luca Lenote. Wow, so the main thing we're gonna look for there is the French versus the Canadians. It's gonna be close at the top. And then the order of uh, placements for the American ice dance teams. And I'm not gonna lie, I think it's gonna be really close between Maya and Alex Shibutani and Madison Hubble and Zach Donahue. What do you all think? Okay, so now for the next portion of this video, I will be showing you all my spreadsheet and be doing a voiceover. So here is a look at the spreadsheet I created. Let's start with the men's here. And what I did was I listed the best short program score and best free program score of each competitor from their two Grand Prix events and combined them for a potential top score. And then I resorted it from highest score to lowest. And I think this is going to be pretty close to what my predictions will be. So you see here for the men's, Shoma Uno had that great short program at Skate Canada, as well as a pretty good free program there as well. Nathan Chen, obviously performing better in the long at Ross Telecom Cup, but did amazingly well at Skate America. You know what? I think the gold medal will be between Shoma Uno and Nathan Chen. I want to root for Nathan because I'm... Definitely pro Team USA, but I think Shoma's gonna win. I think he has the stronger fight in him, and I think he performs more artistically. And his jumps are just so big and difficult. I get that his landings aren't always the best, but he does get big points for attempting them. Nathan Chen, however, seems to still be struggling with the triple axle now and then. So I'm gonna place them as one, two. And then we have the Russians. Mikhail Kolyada could be anywhere, could win the competition or place last. He's not always the most consistent skater, but when he's on, he racks up big points. Ah, I'm, I'm going to say that Mikhail could be anywhere. I'm going to place him between third and fourth, maybe fifth. Sergey Voronov, who has been consistent lately, but lacks the program component marks, I think I would move to fifth. Adam Rippon, I think, is just feeding off of the stride that he has from performing so well this season on the Grand Prix circuit. I think Adam has a shot at the bronze medal, if not fourth place. And unfortunately, with Jason Brown of the United States without a consistent quad, I do see him staying in sixth place here, it'd be great if he landed it in the free program, but even if then he's only attempting one and he still has to get through the rest of his jumps, mainly the triple axle, which tends to give him problems. Now let's move on to the second tab where I did the same for the ladies. So once again, I sorted the top potential score from highest to lowest. No surprise here, Alina Zagidova of Russia comes out on top. Now that total score of 220.78, we, we can be ready to see something much higher at the Grand Prix Final because she hasn't skated a clean shore program this season. Um, the, she, she received a score of 69.44 at Cup of China, and that was with a mistake. I believe it was a fall. So imagine if she's clean, we can see somewhere up to the mid-70s. And that free program score with all of her jumps back loaded we could have our minds blown. <laughs> now, next up, you'll see that it's going to be really close between the next four ladies, Carolina Costner, Satoko Miyahara, Kaylin Osman, and Wakaba Higuchi. Man, it's, it's going to come down to whoever is clean, but if I were to bet my money on who 
would win the silver medal behind Alina Zagitova, assuming that she wins. It's just predictions. I'd say it's Satoko Miyahara. She came out with a bang at Skate America when people least expected it. Now that the judges have kind of um, uh, have their attention on her, I think they're going to be more likely to reward her if she skates a clean program. Also has the difficult content going for triple lutz, triple toe still. I think she could edge out Carolina Costner to place higher on the podium. Carolina, as beautiful of a skater as she is, is going to have to rely on um, upping her technical ante. Um, a triple flip double toe combination will not cut it in the short. Pretty much won't cut in the long either. I'd like to see a triple triple and a more difficult one than a triple toe, triple toe. That being said, her artistry is above everybody else. So she will have a high program component marks that will keep her in podium contention. Caitlin Osman is someone who has the ability to win this competition or place last because she's not always the most consistent skater, especially in the free program. We can expect her to come out with a bang for the shore, but you never know when she skates that long program. I'm going to assume that this competition won't be much different, so I'm going to place her just off the podium at fourth place. And I love Wakaba Higuchi, but she's not rewarded with the scores as some of her comp other competitors are here at this event. So I think she'll be fifth. And Maria Sotskova, nice skater, a little boring. I think she's going to look extremely boring and less polished when compared to these other strong ladies. So I expect her to finish sixth place in sixth place here at the Grand Prix Final. Let's do the same for the pairs. I have Sui and Han of China winning with the nice cushion over Aliona Savchenko and Bruno Musso. And I I would stick with this result because Sui and Han are a lot more consistent than Aliona and Bruno are. They tend to struggle with their side-by-side -side elements, but a lot of times it's just one mistake in the free program, so it doesn't ruin the performance. However, it is about racking up the points to get the higher score to win the competition, and that's going to be a hurdle for them. Evgenia, Evgenia Tarasova and Vladimir Morozov of Russia. You know what? They have a high score here, but I don't think they're going to shine when compared to other pairs in the field. I would move them down a little bit. Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford of Canada, I expect to move up be on the podium in bronze medal position just because they're such tough fighters. They have such difficult content. It's really strange to see Megan Duhamel falter on the side-by-side -side triple lutzes because normally those are on. I expect her to work really hard and for the team to bring their A game at the Grand Prix Final. Ksenia and Fedor of Russia. <laughs> I expect them to put on a good show, a good performance. They are a fan favorite. Not sure how they're going to do scoring-wise against these top teams. And then I think the Chinese pair here will round out the top six in terms of placements. They will have a good free program. I'm just not sure their score will be high enough to move them up from last place, my personal opinion. And then let's finish off with Ice Dance. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. One storyline I want to follow, is it going to be the French or the Canadians who come out on top? It's so close. So here's the thing. I would like Tessa and Scott to win this, but it seems like Gabriella Papadakis and Guillaume Cizeron have that momentum from the judges, that upward momentum that's going to help them score even higher here. But I like Tessa and Scott's programs more. There is a chance that when they compete side by side, Maybe the scores will kind of realign if Gabriella and Guillaume's programs look weaker than Tessa's and Scott's when they skate right after one another. So that's one storyline to follow. And then the second one is which of these three American dance teams will finish out on top? I actually expect that this gap here between Maya Shibutani and Alex Shibutani and Madison Hubble and Zach Donahue to be close a little bit. I do think the Shibutani's will come out on top. I just don't think 
it will be as large of a gap as we're seeing right here, with it being five points off of their potential top score combined. Anna Capolin and Luca Lenote, the Italians, and Madison Chalk and Evan Bates, I think they are going to be fighting for not being in last place here at the Grand Prix Final. Let me know what you think. All right, so this concludes my video. Thank you so much for watching and be on the lookout for next week when I will be filming my recap with Tiffany Langston. She's a skating fan I've met before. She's been on one of my videos as well, but it's been a while, so I'm so excited to have her back. She's smart, sassy, and super knowledgeable about the sport. So it should be a fun one to film. Stay tuned and I will see you all then. Thank you.